the What to Read Next podcast helps you build a TBR of future favorite books. In each episode, Lori and Maine interviews authors and book influencers to recommend books they loved for you to pick up today. If you're an avid reader, always looking for your next free read, then the show's right. Hi, Taylor. Welcome to What to Read Next podcast. Hi, thank you. I'm so excited to be here. So happy to have you here. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Okay. Um, I am the author of a novel called The Lifestyle that's coming out on June 7th. I'm also a lawyer. I still work full-time as a lawyer and I live in LA with my husband and my dog, who's the most amazing dog in the world. Um, and I also used to be a second grade teacher. Oh my gosh. So wait, what made you just become a lawyer and then a writer? Like this is your Ooh. third career, right? Third or fourth. <laughs> yeah, <career>. kind of. <laughs> Uh, I always wanted to be a writer, but I was very scared to pursue it as a goal. I think putting myself out there like that Mm -hmm. and being that vulnerable and failing (laughs) was really scary for me. And so I pursued becoming a lawyer as, you know, the practical thing to do, responsibility Mm -hmm. with the capital R, Mm -hmm. but I never forgot about writing. And then when I was working a lot as a lawyer, really long hours, I started taking fiction writing classes in New York at the Center for Fiction, and it just became like my my release, my passion, the thing that I did outside of the office. And I started writing the lifestyle. Oh my gosh. So what was the journey to publication? You know, it was long and hard. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, I started, I, I, I would say I came up with the idea in the end of 2017. Mm -hmm. but I really didn't know how to write a novel at that point. And so I knew I wanted to do this and I had this idea that I thought would be really fun, but I still had to figure out what I was doing. So I took a lot of classes. Mm -hmm. I, I took classes at the center for fiction and Sackett street and then catapult, which I absolutely loved and have taken many classes. at. I think I've single-handedly kept them in business over the years. Um, (laughs) And that's how I learned how to write a novel. And the whole process took me about three years. Mm -hmm. And then I queried and I found my amazing agent who I love so much, Jamie Carr at the book group. Mm -hmm. And then she was able to sell the book. And it's just been an absolute dream come true. Oh my gosh, I love this. So let's talk about the lifestyle. Tell us the elevator. Okay, okay. The lifestyle is about a lawyer in New York named Georgina who catches her husband having an affair, which shatters her life because she felt that she had the perfect job, the perfect husband, all of her dreams had come true. And so she thinks, no, I'm not going to let this ruin me. I'm going to fix this. So she decides that they will become swingers (laughs) and (laughs) they will recapture the spark and, you know, reignite some romance in their relationship and save their marriage. And so she enters the New York swinging scene and she has no idea what she's getting herself into. So what kind of resource did you have to conduct? (laughs) You know, because I'm thinking like, what kind of Google search is going to look like? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, every weird Google search that you can imagine. I Googled every iteration of best sex clubs, NYC, what's it like to go to a sex club, Google images of sex clubs. Um, I found a lot of helpful resources. I, I found that a lot of people in the lifestyle write really openly about their experiences because they want to help other people who are considering it um, know how to approach the, 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 more difficult scenarios to navigate. Like, what do you talk about with your partner before you go to your very first party ever? Mm -hmm. And so there is a lot of kindness and support within the community where people will, they'll share tips, they'll share, you know, the rules of engagement and really, really encourage people that are considering getting into the lifestyle with a partner to be really open and work on your communication and talk about it in advance, which is something that I really worked into the book. The characters, they, they learn how to talk really openly about their expectations at the parties and 
that ends up being really productive for them, you know, in life, learning how to communicate what they want. And I also read a lot of marriage counseling websites, like very cerebral um, Mm -hmm. (laughs) writings on this. Uh, There are some marriage counselors that specialize in helping couples navigate the lifestyle or ethical non-monogamy or whatever path they choose. And I found it really helpful because it, it approached the situation with a very academic um, perspective. And I learned through reading the, that information that divorce among couples in the, in the lifestyle is actually much lower than in, than in monogamous couples. I can imagine. I feel like because they're communicating to each other, they're speaking up, they're saying like what they want, what they don't want, what they like, what they don't like, you know, they're probably like open, they're not like looking for another person because they already have another partner. So they're, they're not expecting the couple, the other person, the couple to meet all their needs, like their needs are going to be met in different places, you know, so probably is a much more healthier, you know, quote unquote healthier, you know, relationship in some ways. Yeah, that's exactly right. I think people feel very fulfilled by the experience and they really feel like it helps, helps them. It helps their trust and communication with their partner because they're able to say, this is my boundary. Mm -hmm. Um, and their partner then respects that boundary, uh, or they're able to say, this is what I want and not feel bad about telling their partner that's what they want. And it ends up being, you know, really productive. All right. So what was the source of inspiration? Like, what was the, what was the little seed that just brought this, you know, <laughs> this yeah. together? Um, my eureka moment was I, I had just read this, this essay by a very good friend of mine where she was talking about her name is Crystal Hana Kim and she's a novelist as well. And she was talking about how you want to start writing from a situation that has a lot of tension in it. Mm -hmm. And then my Eureka moment came very shortly after when I was at a party and I overheard some people talking about swinging and I thought, okay, there's a situation with a lot of tension in it (laughs) because (laughs) there's just so much that could happen. There would be love and sex and jealousy and meeting new people and, you know, Mm -hmm. feeling fizzy attraction and excitement and fear. Um, So I thought that would make a really, really fun book. And I don't think I've ever read anything like that before. And then it kind of took on a life of its own where I started to feel like I really wanted to write this book where a woman is exploring what she wants, both in the bedroom and outside of it without feeling any shame. So what kind of books do you gravitate? Like in terms of reading wise, like what kind of books do you gravitate? Um, Mostly romantic comedies. I mean, I love what's happening right now. The boom of these amazing, hilarious love stories are just so, it's so wonderful. Um, I just read, for example, Funny You Should Ask by Alyssa Sussman. I just loved it. I read it in a day. Mm -hmm. I, right before that, I read In a New York Minute by Kate Spencer. Mm -hmm. And that book made me miss New York so much. (laughs) Yes. Trail in that book is just it's like this incredibly magical place where anything could happen which is New York mm-hmm. but having lived there for 10 years I don't always remember it that way <laughs> I had the same feeling reading it, and I was like I feel like I was transported back to New York like walk across the Brooklyn Bridge go down the street like how New York sometimes it can be a small town like the, the person you don't want to see you see them over and over yeah <laughs> and just exactly. like, it's like a freaking small town and there's like Ava people living here <laughs> you know yeah, exactly it's like nostalgia yeah I I talked to Kate and I was like you just like you made New York like you just as a New Yorker it was a great portrayal and it made me long being in New York right now I know it really was even the bagels. I was like, I need to actually get in the car and go get a bagel right now. <laughs> go get the bagel. The reference to each other, like New York one, you know, like the whole new station was like, New York one, <laughs> you know, like it's, it's a very, exactly. very, very New York and stuff. So rom-coms is that that's your go-to. Yeah. I would say, um, I, I would be hard pressed to read a book that doesn't have some sort of love story in it. Yeah. I, it doesn't need to be a straight romance, but I do 
really like it when the character has, you know, a, a romantic pull. I don't know. I'm a sucker for a love story. Yeah, me too. Me too. It's all, it's all for the love story. Yeah. Um, <laughs> do you have any other books? Uh, what are you working next, actually? Um, I'm working on my next novel. And it's going to be a holiday book, which I'm super psyched about. Oh. Yeah, I love, I, I am just the connoisseur of Netflix holiday <laughs> rom-coms. So I just, there's just something so special about um, holiday movies. And I wanted to write something in book form that was similar to one of my favorites, which is The Family Stone. And so it's going to be a family comedy dramedy that takes place over the holidays. Oh, I love this. And tell me which, which is your go-to Netflix rom-com that you were like, okay, Ooh. I need to watch or everyone should watch. You know? Okay. I actually really like Christmas Inheritance. Have you seen that one? No, no. <laughs> that one is, it was kind of an OG because now they're like cranking them out. Yeah. This one is from 2017. It was pretty Ooh. early. That's an yeah. early, that's an early release. Okay. Yeah. It was a pioneer in the field of Netflix rom-coms. <laughs> yes. Oh my gosh. I am excited for <laughs> Love and Gelato. They, they're doing that one um, this summer and I'm like looking forward to it because yeah, I read the book. It's all set in Florence and it's all about gelatos. And I'm like, yes. Uh, perfect. <laughs> <You know? laughs> we just need rom-coms or just like take us to like have a fun, have a fun adventure. <laughs> exactly. Know? Exactly. So awesome. So tell us where you can find you online. Um, you can find me on my website, which is taylorhan.com. And you can also find me on Instagram at Taylor Shea Han. Um, I, I do have a Twitter. I'm like the worst tweeter ever. So <laughs> don't, don't bother. <laughs> it's okay. Honestly, we're, we're to the point where like pretty much Instagram is where, where most people are at, or now they're moving to TikTok, but Instagram is like the place where, you know, we're to go. <laughs> so. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. You'll find a lot of dog photos. So if that's if that's what you're into, definitely follow me. Yes, awesome. So Taylor, thank you so much for being on the show. Oh, it was so so fun to be here. I wish we could talk all day. Yeah. <laughs> if you enjoyed this podcast, feel free to share with friends, subscribe, rate, and review the show. This is the easiest way to support the podcast. For a list of books mentioned and other romance recommendations, please visit whatchwernextblog.com. Did you know you can purchase audiobooks directly from your favorite local bookstore? With Librafem, you can pick up more than 250,000 audiobooks, including bestsellers and recommendations from real booksellers. You'll get the same audiobooks at the same price as the largest audiobook company, you know the name, but you'll be part of a different story, one that supports the local community. If you're new to audiobooks, they're the perfect way to squeeze more reading into your busy life. Listen with the free Libra FM app while you do your chores, walk the dog, relax at home. If you already love audiobooks and don't know what to listen next, check out recommendations from people who know the best booksellers. The Watch Your Next podcast has a special offer for our listeners. Get to audiobooks on Libra FM for the price of one with your first month membership. Use code What Should We Next. The offer is valid only for new members in Canada and the U.S. The Watch Your Next podcast is part of the Frolic Podcast Network. Please visit frolic.media slash podcast to discover new shows to tune in. Thank you so much for listening and have a great day.